the moment I've been waiting on, the moment I've been waiting for, we got Big Just in the building, one of the founders. Um, this is, we're going to do this a little different. It's the Toronto Beckham podcast, but we got Big Just in the building. Uh, just introduce yourself for the people who don't know you out there, bro. For the people that don't know me, it's your boy Big Just in the building. Big Just. Big Just. Big Just in the building. You know the tune in, you know what I mean? Man, that's a classic tag. That's all I was saying. I was on my way getting ready to come down here, and I just kept saying, Big Justice in the building. Like, the one with the, like, is that a female saying that, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had that tag for a while? I did, actually. I did, actually. I know I, I know. it's time to switch it Who up. Who made that tag before uh, we get started, bro? Actually, I forget, bro. Mm-hmm. I forget, because there was a few times where, um, you know, we had... Uh, a couple artists and stuff that be in the studio that be offering it to us like hey let's make a tag for you and, yeah you know i just be getting in on it like hey well yeah say this for me real quick uh, okay you know so it wasn't nothing special at the time it was just something like to get out to get on tracks yeah it, yeah it was like i said one of the random artists that we had in the studio yeah all right but before all that who's big just bro where's big just originally from like where you come from bro we don't know uh I come from the north side, man. I come from the north side. Too. I come from the north side, man. They want that north side shit, man. So this is this is great, man. What part of the north side, man? We need to know that too. Honestly, bro, eh, I kind of got around a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like partly from up top, Northview Heights, mm. and then I did partly down bottom, Charles Street. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know. He said some good ones, some good classic places we know on the north side. What, what years was you growing up there? Was it the, the, is this the 90s? In, 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 in yeah, yeah, 90s, 90s. How was Northview Heights in the 90s before we even moved forward? Cause Northview Heights was crazy in the 90s, bro. It was crazy. We couldn't even, uh, as as like elementary kid, elementary school and middle school kids, like we couldn't even get on our school buses in the morning without like, Seeing some shit go down or like hearing some gunshots go off or some shit, you know? You serious? Yeah. This was when like the Crips and the Bloods and like the gang started to like get real heavy. You know what I mean? Like shit was heavy. Oh, so you growing up in, and I remember them times at the end, but you're growing up in it when it was just starting really in the 90s. Yeah, like. yeah, when it was just starting. When it was just starting, like, you know what I mean? And everybody wanted to be a crib on back then. Everybody wanted to be a crib. Everybody wanted to be a crib. And it was like gang violence going on it with inside them them gates. We ain't had the gates at the time. Okay. The gates wasn't up there at the time. And um, not only that, but there was like four, maybe five different ways to get in and out of there before them gates came. But no, the gates wasn't up there at the time, bro. Ah, so people would come up there and do shit? That's crazy. Man. I ain't know this one. So I'm I'm just surprised y'all my bet. Alright, so boom. You moving around there, like was you involved in any of that shit or you nah, just there clear? No, nah, I stood clear of that shit. And 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 I'm quick to admit to that shit, bro. I was not involved in that shit at all. Now the people around me was involved in that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And at the same time, once, you know, the people around me saw the type of head that I had on my shoulders, they actually made it a point to keep me out of that shit, you know what I mean? Made it, uh, yeah, so. Cause don't get me wrong, I was, I was, I, I was idolizing that shit when I saw it, you know what I mean? Like, I thought it was cool looking at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, watching my too. peoples, you know, tote guns and count money and, you know, sell drugs, you know what I mean? Yeah, I did, I did too. We all, I, but, I feel you, I feel you in a different time, like, just a different time. But like I said, though, once my, you know what I mean, the people around me realized the type of head that I had on my shoulders, you know what I mean, they was making it a point to, to keep me away from that shit, like, no, nah, this ain't it for you, you know what I mean? So, what schools did you go to growing up? Growing up, I mean, you know, keeping it simple, I went to uh, yeah. Martin Luther King on the north side, elementary. Same. Martin Luther King. I went to Schiller in middle school. Ah, oh, okay. Over, it's, that's still on the north side, yep. too. And yep. then I went to Perry. That was simple. Graduated 03. So you ain't like my boy Stevie, who, was, who said he was getting kicked out. So you, you was you was, you was you was a good student girl in, in I high was, school? bro. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. When my, like I said, when my people saw the top of head I had on my shoulders, they was making it a point to keep me out of that shit. Keep my head in them books, you know what I mean? Stay up. So yeah, did you do any sports or any uh, activities in high school, bro? Actually, no, I didn't. 
because unfortunately, all that keeping me away from that shit didn't last once I got to high school. So you had some you had some times in high school, so yeah, you know, doing Bleach, shit that I, shit. doing shit that I, you know, I ain't gonna say I regret it, cause fuck it, you know what I mean. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shit. What was you doing, man? You were still at groceries or what? I mean, I was just doing outlaw shit. I was selling drugs in school and shit like Damn, that. Damn, nigga? Mm-hmm. In period? Yeah, bro. And then uh, my junior year, bro, I got into this car accident. Um, You know how uh, the field is down the street from the school? Mm-hmm. Well, we was on our way coming back from the field or whatever, and I had got into this car accident, and um, low-key, they found a half an uh, ounce of weed on me and shit, man. Damn. Yeah. So they oh when you I be thinking about that shit all the time when I get in that like don't get in an accident with a bunch of weed on you. So. Yeah, the half ounce. So was it in did you get in an accident because you you said middle school? In the middle of school, mm. like it was like twelve o'clock in the morning okay. afternoon, bro. We like I said, we was on our way back to school from the field. Yeah, yeah. And I got a half ounce of weed on me, man. That shit was crazy though. Man. And the crazy part about it is, is uh, I ain't give a fuck about the cops. I ain't give a fuck about the school. Nigga, I gave a fuck about my grandma. I just was worried about my grandma finding out about that shit, yo. Yeah, like... That's yeah. all I remember is my grandma not like, no, don't nobody tell my grandma about this shit. How did your grandma react? Oh, uh, man, I can't even speak on it, man. Yeah, it was I bad. I can't even speak did on that, it. Did that get you back on track, that situation? Actually, it did. Yeah. Actually, it did. You know what I mean? Actually, it did. I had a situation the same in high school. You get that one, and it'd be like, it take one time for it took one time for me, and yeah, I had to get back on track because you don't want to let them people down. And the crazy part about it is, um, I was actually on the line of being expelled. Damn. But my track record is what saved me. You know what I mean? They took a look at my track record. They looked at my history. Like, damn, this kid really ain't. Yeah. He's just you know what I mean at a different place in this in his life right now. He really ain't supposed to be involved in that type of shit. So. They definitely gave me a second chance. Shook that off. Graduated. Graduated 03, my nigga. When did the music shit start for you? Right after I graduated. And the crazy part is is that, you know, for a lot of, you know, musicians and producers and shit, they say it actually started in high school because, like, they was in a band and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, I thought I was in nah, like bro, that. Much right after high school. Mm-hmm. But I always had the knack for music, though. You know what I mean? Like, I always, like, for some reason felt like music was it for me. I didn't know how at the time, but I just always felt like it. You know what I mean? And then once I graduated, my little cousin, Coop, rest in peace, he introduced me to FL Studio and my life. Been that was in 2004 or three. Around that time. That was 03, yeah. Like that. Matter of fact, it was like borderline. That was like end of 03, beginning of 04 type shit. Before, like, so who was some of your influences growing up? Let me get that from you. Like, growing up, uh, I mean, of course, you know, Dr. Dre, as far as production. Mm. Yeah, as far as rapping. Growing up, like, I used to like niggas like Bone Thugs and Harmony, you know what I mean? Like, when that Thuggish Ruggish Bone came out, that shit changed the game, man. Okay. So that's but to be that. honest with you, bro, one of the things that I got to admit, bro, is my very, very, very first ever favorite rapper was LL Cool J, bro. LL Cool J was yeah. that fucking dude when I was a kid back in, like, the late 80s, okay. early 90s. He was that nigga. And you know what, little bro, Keith? Low key, a lot of people don't know LL Cool J was actually the first rapper to call himself the GOAT, bro. He got an album called GOAT. Yeah, I remember. I nigga, LL that. was the first nigga to call himself a GOAT. Niggas don't know that, time. though. Yeah, bro. LL was my nigga, bro. I mean, he's still my nigga, to be honest with you. Yeah, they just, but, the acting probably. I, I guess so, but when, when niggas talk that legend talking, mm-hmm. they always leave LL out, but nigga, LL's the one that started this shit, bro. So that was one of your favorite rappers? Oh, uh, man, up. LL was that nigga to me, bro. Dude. I know niggas probably gonna see this shit like, oh, this nigga cool. Nah, I mean, you got me off guard <laughs> with that. I mean, but I can but that see that, That was my bro. nigga, bro. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, man. Yeah, that Congo hat shit, Oh, man, bro, that shit. was a signature, that Kango hat. That was a signature. I'm going to have to do my research and get me <laughs> going because I can't even quote too many LL songs. But Oh, uh, shit. So, Dr. Dre for the production. Oh, you good? Oh, 
He, he, he got to put the car back. So. Yeah, man. You know. All right. So, boom. You start producing. Coop was one of your biggest influences, you said? Oh, yeah. Coop was one Did of my biggest Did he show you how to do this shit? He showed me how to do it. He showed me how to do everything. He showed me how to do everything. He showed me how to make the beats. He showed me how to, like, edit the music and shit. You know what I mean? He showed me how to engineer. Mm -hmm. He showed me, like, little, small, like, video editing skills. Because he was doing it all. Oh, man. so he was doing all of this shit. So man, you know a little video doing editing, all of too? This shit. Yeah, a little something, a little something. Anytime you see a, a Big Just video or something like that, I, you know, more than likely I'm the one that did the edits to it. You know yeah. All right, boom. So who was like your first artist you would say you was working with? Like who you first recorded? Um, I want to say my man Lava. He called us, he, his rap name was Lava. Where was he from? From Northview. All right, so you, we was, where was you recording at first? At Up first? in Northview. Up at the crib. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, uh, when I graduated high school, um, my grandma was working at the housing authority building or whatever. And um, I had put in an application to get a little apartment, and she pushed my shit to the top. Yeah. Got me a little two-bedroom apartment. I ain't had no kids or nothing, so I really didn't need two bedrooms, but yeah. my grandma had the juice up there, so. Okay. You know what I mean? And, of course, that second bedroom was the studio, you know what I mean? And that's when, you know, Asco used to come up there. Oh, so you met Asco, like, in 04? Yeah, bro. Well, I don't know if it was 04. Yeah, but early in it, the game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before he was Asco. Who was he? Who was, who was he? Who was Jay Lope. Huh? <laughs> Damn, I don't know if he could. Nah, I'm going to get bro on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get brother yeah, on. Before he was Asco, he was Jay Lope. Damn. He dropped a bomb on us. But yeah, at that time, you know what I mean? My little second bedroom was the stew. You know, he used to have everybody. Well, not everybody, but the the, the people that I trusted because yeah because you ain't want everybody I ain't there. want everybody in my shit but at the same time I definitely wanted to run a studio I did so yeah you was you know kind of I mean? like halfway. but that that was actually when I started recording but I actually first started it in my mom's basement mm -hmm. I had my computer hooked up down there with some like car speakers and shit had that shit rumbling the whole crib from the basement to the roof mm. And um, every time I make some new beats, I you know invite some friends over. We smoke some weed. I play some beats, and niggas will freestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah. But once I got to my recording part of my career, per se, I guess, um, I was in my own little apartment, and I had the second bedroom turned into a little studio. Damn. Put the uh, put the motherfucking soundproofing on the wall and shit. Hey yo, that shit. I definitely thought I knew what I was doing back there, bro. And you was charging these folks for this shit? No. Oh, you was just showing love. No, we no, I wasn't charging nothing. We was um I thought you <laughs> No, no. Um we was just getting it in, man. I like it was I was doing this shit for the love of music, man. I wasn't worried about charging nothing. Because you time. was young back then. You talking about when you just got out of high school and shit like right, that. So, right. Yeah, I could see you just doing this shit for real. Boom, you found so so you was there when Asco start first started rapping and shit. Oh right? yeah. Mm hmm That's dope. Mm hmm what was Bully and ENT? Like, what, how does, what is that? Bully and T? What you mean? Like, I, like, how did, what is, what's that name? What is, like, because I remember that name from even me first. This is 10 years, 11 years ago. When I um first started, when I first came around y'all niggas, you know, Loud Pack, I even remember the Bully and T shit. And that for was, sure, for sure. that was associated with you. <laughs> Wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> yeah, was that just how you was? That was just how you like something you had going on. Yeah, yep. Bully and T was my um my music label. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah. Cause like once I found my way, you know, producing and I got comfortable, you know, recording and engineering and shit. You know, I felt like all right. Well, now is the time to like really step it up and you know call this thing a label, get it started. Yeah. You know what I mean, and and get this thing legit, and you know I decided to call it Bully and T, cause, and it's gonna sound corny, but what I always thought was is that the music that we put out was always going bully everybody else's music off the top. Yeah, I mean you that's how I, mean? I felt, and that's what I, that's the feeling. Like it don't matter who's on the top of the charts when our shit hit the charts, nigga, we bullied everybody to the top. You know what I mean, and. 
Who was a part of that at the beginning? At the beginning, it was my man Lava. Mm-hmm. And then it was another uh, another dude that I used to run with. His name was K Dub. He was rapping at the time, and he was running with us. So I decided to put him on the uh, label as an artist as well. Yeah. And um, at the time, Asco was actually uh, a part of another situation called uh, Pyrex. I want to say it was called Pyrex Vision or Pyrex Records. Mm -hmm. I forget it was Pyrex. I knew. I know it's Pyrex something. Mm -hmm. And um, but at the time, he was a part of that situation. But Pyrex Records was, you know, what I mean, coming to record at my studio or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, eventually. Uh, when that situation kind of like fizzled out a little bit because you know, doing this shit like, sometimes people expect so much out of it and when, you yeah. know, they don't meet them expectations, they a lot of people give up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that situation kind of fizzled out a little bit but Asco was still trying to do the shit. Asco was still like, the one coming to my crib, knocking on my door every morning, waking me up like, yo, what we doing today? Mm -hmm. So eventually it just became a situation where he was bullying T. You know what I mean? And then once Asco became bullying T, that's when we uh, ended up getting Teflon. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So he, you was working with Teflon very early? We was the one that, we was the one that raised Teflon. I mean, not to say it like that, but when Teflon very, very, very first started rapping. Before the FTR shit? Way before FTR. When he got with FTR, it was, uh, once he, like, yeah. I want to say, um, I want to say, um, there was a situation with his brother that happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to his older brother. Yeah. And, um, once that situation happened, he had left the north side and went with his peoples on the other side of town. Mm hmm you know what I mean? And once he started, you know, uh, being with his peoples on the other side of town, that's when he ended up with the FTR situation, I want to say. Mm -hmm. But when he first, first started, he was a bully in team. Wow. You just dropped one on us. Asco's the one that gave him the name Teflon. Mm. Man, that's like my family. So yeah, that was dope. That's a dope story, man. Ask, ask Teflon's mom. I'm going to ask. I'm dumb. Yeah, that was a good She'll story. She'll tell you. I can believe she still that. Got, she still got... A lot of the music and everything. I can believe that. She be on Facebook posting that shit sometimes. <laughs> I didn't even know she still had that. Yeah, that's my fam. I don't even know if I still got that Teflon shit. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, man. So, boom. When did you meet Stevie B? Because that's big. I met Stevie, um... Damn, I can't remember what year that was. I want to say it was, like, later in the game, like... Yeah. Uh... I want to say like 2010. 2010. Hmm. I want to say like 2010. Yeah, yeah that's dope. Because what had happened was, is, um, you know, once I started doing this music shit, you know, I was like really doing this music shit, you know what I mean? So um, I was, you know, moving around and, and getting around in the circuit and meeting new people and, you know, exchanging, you know, numbers and information with people and linking up with different people. And uh, I was actually linking up with my man, Collage Dang, who was actually one of my earlier on, like, mentors besides my dad, you know what I mean? Because my dad is actually my very, very first mentor because he was the one that introduced me to this studio shit. Mm -hmm. Before I was making beats, I was like eight, nine years old in the studio with my dad oh, while he dad was making was music. Studio. Yeah. Okay. He used to record with uh, Soy Sauce, um, I don't know if you know Soy Sauce, but I know a lot of niggas that's watching this is going to know Soy Sauce. He's one of the GOAT engineers in Pittsburgh, low-key. Mm. Yeah, Soy Sauce is around? a GOAT. Yeah, he's still around. I got to get him on. He's still around. He still got a studio and everything. He's still be getting it in. Mm. But yeah, um, but low-key, my man Collage Dane was like collecting a lot of us producers that was coming up because he was going, you know what I mean, have like a nice little production thing that's actually like what our loud pack thing is today. Mm. He, my man, Collage Dane was trying to like do something like that. And um, there was actually uh, another producer that was there by the name of Buck 50. Mm -hmm. And he was actually a producer of a group called Bergtown. 
which was the group that Stevie B first started with. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and he was telling me like, yeah, you got to meet my man Stevie B, man. He's nice on the hooks because Stevie B was singing. At, he was singing at first. He wasn't yeah. producing the engineering at first. Yeah. He was singing and shit at first. Mm -hmm. So it was like, yeah, he kept saying it like, yeah, you got to meet my man Stevie, man. He's a beast, man. He's dope, da da da. da. So low key, eventually, I ended up running into Stevie B. My man Big Twan, which is like, mm -hmm. man, Big Twan is, oh, that's my dog, You bro. just said it, Big Twan put it, put, put it a lot of together. Big Twan, y'all, yeah, bro. Big Twan is my nigga, shout out to that's Big Twan. That's my nigga too, man. Swear to God, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, yeah. Big Twan had ended up bringing his car to my uncle's garage to get fixed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was at my uncle's garage, you know what I mean? Fuck with my uncle and shit at the time. And, <clears throat> Being that we knew each other and shit, when we saw each other, you know, it was all love and shit. And he was like, oh, yeah, bro. Uh, so if you since you're still doing that music shit, bro, you should stop past my spot and bring some beats to you. You know what I mean? I'll grab some beats off you. I got a studio in my basement that I put together and shit. And when I got over there, it was official. It was definitely an official was spot. Was that Eiton? That was Eiton. Wow. That was Eiton. That was my introduction to Eiton Street. Wow. Yep. When I saw him at my uncle's, when I saw Tawn at my uncle's garage, he was like, yeah, come through, bring some beats. And um, low key, what I had did was, is, um, back when I was like first starting out and when I was selling beats back then, I used to always bring Asco with me because I used to want to introduce him to everybody and shit and getting everybody to know him because I knew at the time Asco was going to be like my, my poster artist at the time on yeah. Bully and T because yeah. he was just getting way too much like... Everybody just kept, you know what I mean, coming to me like, yeah, who, who's the one that be? And they would spit his bars back to me like, yeah, who's the one that said this? And yeah. um, it was Asco. It was Asco. So I knew Asco was going to be that dude. So low key, every time I had a beat set or whatever, I would grab Asco. So when I left my uncle's garage, I went up to the hood and grabbed Asco. Then we shot down Twan's crib. And when I got there, J. Pad and Stevie B was in there mm -hmm. with Twan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because at the time, J. Pad was the engineer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was my introduction to Jake Pad as well. Yeah, okay. And that was the first time I actually met Stevie. I didn't even know Stevie was going to be in there, though. Mm -hmm. I just thought I was coming to my nigga Big Twan's crib to check his studio out, sell him a beat or two, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Introduce Asco to everybody or whatever, and yeah. you know what I mean? I had no idea Stevie was going to be there, bro. Mm -hmm. But it was funny because, like I said, prior to that, my man Buck 50 kept saying, yeah, you got to meet my man Stevie B, bro. You got to meet my man Stevie B. He's nice. He's nice. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I ended up meeting him, like, on some humbug shit. Yeah. For, for so y'all, you kind of introduced Asco to Stevie B. Yeah. Yeah. I introduced Asco to a lot of people. Uh, I introduced yeah. Asco to Oe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, man. A lot of niggas, like, we, Vaughn Trees, all the niggas from back in the day. You you got a lot of history, man. A little, a little bit of a lot. A little bit of a lot. You done worked, <laughs> yeah, with, I mean? you done worked with everybody. A little bit of a lot. I swear. There's a lot of cut. Like, we're going to get to the shit, bro. I just sure. like to get the history because that's a dope history. Oh, it's a lot, man. It's a lot of history, too, man. But uh, currently, you the, you the king. You the, you the one who crowned the, the Pittsburgh list. <laughs> when did you come up with this list, bro? Uh... <laughs> Let's um, get to it. All right, we can get to it. What uh, what year is this? Twenty. I remember that list, man. I remember you making them lists, bro. Um, you made a lot of lists. I want to say it was a strong six years ago. I should say it was a good six years ago when I started the list shit. What what made you start the list shit? Bro? Now, what made me start the list? Now, originally. It wasn't a list. It was a collage, if, if if you want to be technical. I mean, Pittsburgh just, like, coined it the list, but it, it, it actually started out as a collage. And I was just doing it because, you know what I mean? Now, I ain't going to stunt, bro. Now, I actually got the idea from a New York picture. Um, I don't know if niggas remember, but, like, back in the day, like in like barber, you would like see the picture often in like barber shops or like little boutiques and shit. Um, and it was like a picture of all the New York rappers. Mm. You know what I mean? But somebody like hand drew it. You know what I mean? And um, I always like thought that that picture was like one of the hardest things like ever because it had like every fucking rapper that you could think of in this picture. Like their head was in this picture. But like I said, somebody hand drew it. You know what I mean? And for some reason, bro, that image forever 
was like stuck in my head, bro. And you know, that was like, like I said, early nineties and shit, like back in the days when like barbershops and shit, you know yeah. what I mean? But fast forward to today, you know what I mean? Like I said, about five, six years ago when I first started it, you know, I still had that image in my head and shit. So, you know, I was like, you know what? I think I should do something like that for Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm in the mix, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I know a few artists, you know what I mean? And plus, um, not only do I know a few artists, but I'm also always amongst conversations about these artists. You know what I mean? So I felt like, all right, well, you know, I'm going to put together a picture like that with the people that's, you know, a part of Pittsburgh hip hop that's, you know, always the topic of discussion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people like to say, oh, it's a popularity thing, and maybe it is. So you know what I mean? Thing. But at the same time, it wasn't, my intentions for it to be about popularity, it was about paying homage to artists that's bringing up Pittsburgh hip-hop. Yeah. Know what I mean? Um, do people inbox you about that shit? Like, All the time. Really? People inbox me um, when they see me out. Because uh, to be honest with you, um, I don't really like going out and shit, but when I know somebody's performing somewhere, I like to pop my head in, check them out, especially if I ain't never seen them perform before, you know what I mean? Because now it's to the point where um, once I started making a list, it's kind of like good for me to get out and, you know what I mean, like I said, see artists perform that I never saw perform before and shit like that because that could be their way on the list. Like, I didn't went, I didn't check them out, heard their music, might have went past their YouTube, might even, you know what I mean, grabbed a uh, mixtape or something off of them or, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, low key when I uh, be in these places and shit as soon as they see me they say something about the list like yeah bro I hope I get on that list this year man like one time I was at this one performance and, and I had like three different artists I don't even think they like even knew each other but all three of these artists like when they saw me at three different times in this one event said something about getting on it like, yeah, big bro, oh, I'm glad you're here, bro. I'm about to get on in a second, bro. Wait till you see me perform, bro. I'm definitely going to make that list this year, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so you fuck with that shit? Yeah, I do. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I do. I do. Especially now that it then, you know what I mean, it then went on for years, and now more and more people are starting to, like, show it love more than they did at first, because at first it was a lot of, like, hate, to be honest with you. Especially if... If they nephew's grandson, niece wasn't on there, yeah. man, they <laughs> was hating. But now a lot of people, you know, they, like, love it now. They, like, okay, they look forward to it now, you know what I mean? All right, man, what do you think about people trying to, like, copy and do the same thing as you make their own list? <laughs> you got a problem with that or you cool? Uh, you know what? I ain't got a problem with it. I ain't got a problem with it because, you know, with the position that I play in Pittsburgh's music you know what I mean it's part of the game that I influence the generation that's up and coming that looks up to me mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's only right that they're influenced by what I'm doing because like I said people look forward to it they show it a lot of love and attention I mean a lot of people you know still be upset about it but I mean you know everybody will have their chance you know what I mean but no, I ain't, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm flattered. You know what I mean? Flattered? I'm flattered, man. One second.